one for you, Tommy. An event to celebrate. I was in the moment. We were in the moment. Freaking brilliant. A legacy to cherish. One of the greatest sitcoms ever made. A reunion to remember. We would watch the show more than we would make music. This show was and still is big for the culture. Can there be a Martin reboot? I mean, the people want to know. Martin the Reunion, now streaming on BET+. Plus. Welcome to my channel. Now, it's going to be a few clips of um, from BET. Now, if you see the clips, that means YouTube let it go through. If not, that means I was shut down. This is the history of BET. Black Entertainment Television is an American basic cable channel targeting African American audiences. It is owned by the CBS Entertainment Group unit of Paramount Global via BET Networks and has offices in New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago, and was formerly headquartered in Washington, D.C. As of 2015, approximately 88.2 million American households, 75% of households with television, received the channel. After stepping down as a lobbyist for the cable industry, Freeport, Illinois native Robert L. Johnson decided to launch his own cable television network. He will soon acquire a loan for $15,000 and a $500,000 investment from media executive John Malone to start the network, which was named Black Entertainment Television, acronym BET, was launched on January 25, 1980. Cheryl D. Miller designed the logo that would represent the network which featured a star to symbolize a black star power. Initially broadcasting for two hours a week as a block of programming on the Madison Square Garden Sports Network, which would eventually change the name to the USA Network, three months after BET launched. The network's lineup was composed of music videos and reruns of popular black sitcoms. It wouldn't be until 1983 that BET became a full-fledged entity independent of any other channel or programming block. Though for years it continued to share space with other cable networks on local cable systems due to lack of channel room for their 24-hour schedule until the time of digital cable allowed for a larger channel capacity. In some markets, the network would not arrive at all until as late as the early 2010s. And Viacom, CBS, considered a compulsory and retransmission consent negotiations to carry the BET networks with Viacom, CBS networks due to some cable providers claiming that there was an overall lack of demand for the channel or there was a low to non-existent African-American population within their service area. BET launched a news program, BET News, in 1988 with Ed Gordon as its anchor. Ed Gordon would later host other programs and specials on BET, such as Black Men Speak Out, The Aftermath, related to the 1992 Los Angeles riots, and a recurring interview show. Conversations with Ed Gordon. In 1996, the talk show BET Tonight started with Tavis Smiley as the host. In 2001, Ed Gordon replaced Tavis Smiley as host of the program. In 1991, the network became the first black controlled television company to be listed on the New York Stock Exchange. Starting in the 90s, the network expanded with the launch of digital cable networks. What is now the general interest channel BET Her was initially launched as BT on Jazz, also formerly known as Centric, created initially to showcase jazz music related programming, especially that of African American jazz musicians. In 1997, it entered into a joint venture with Stars, then owned by John Malone's Liberty Media, but later acquired by Lionsgate years later to launch a multiplex for service of the premium channel featuring African American originated films called BET Movie Stars 3. Later renamed Black Stars after BET dropped out of the venture following its purchase by Viacom. The owner of Stars rival Showtime and now known as Stars in Black. In 2001, the network lost its status as a black owned business when it was bought by media conglomerate Viacom for $3 billion. In 2005, Robert Johnson retired from the network, turning over his titles of president and CEO to former BET vice president Deborah Lee. In 2002, the network had launched two more music-oriented networks, BET Hip Hop and BET Gospel. BET also launched a series of original programming by this time, including reality shows Baldwin Hills and Hell Date. The competition show Sunday Best and Town Hall Style discussion show Hip Hop vs. America. BET's president of entertainment, Reginald Hudlin, resigned from the network on September 11, 2008. He was replaced by Stephen Hill 
who's also executive vice president of music programming and talent. BET announced in March 2010 that Ed Gordon will return to the network to host a variety of news programs and specials. In March 2017, President of Programming Stephen Hill and Executive Vice President of Original Programming Zola Mash, Mash, somebody both stepped down. Connie Orlando, Senior Vice President of Specials, Music Programming and News, was named the Interim President of Programming. In July 2017, Viacom signed new film and television development deals with Tyler Perry following the aspiration of his existing pact with Discovery Incorporated in 2019. As part of this deal, Tyler Perry will produce the Oval and Sisters for BET and co-own the network's newly launched streaming service, BET+. Plus. In March 2023, it was reported that Paramount Global was exploring the sale of a majority stake in BET networks in order to provide additional funding to its flagship streaming service, Paramount+. Plus. Tyler Perry, as well as Sean Puffy Combs, who owns Revolt TV, and Byron Allen, who owns Entertainment Studios, the Grio and the Weather Channel were identified as potential suitors. BET's programming began with a wide variety of comedy, news, and current events, along with public affairs and music programming, including mainstream rap, hip hop, and R&B music videos, which now air on its branded sister networks and the network's former flagship program, 106 in Park, which premiered on September 11, 2000 and ended on December 19, 2014. In addition, BET has previously aired same day or week delayed late night runs of syndicated talk shows. Original programming currently seen on BET include The Oval, House of Pain, and several unscripted series. Daily programming on the network composes of acquired television series and both theatrically and direct-to-video release films. The network's former morning BET Rejoice block, formerly BET Inspiration, until 2017, was dedicated to religious programming and aired in lieu of infomercials and late night, which the network hasn't aired since 1997. BET is one of the few subscription channels and one of only two Paramount-owned networks to have discontinued airing infomercial sister network Nickelodeon via its Nick at Night block ran infomercials in some overnight time slots from 1987 to 1998, with series airing in that day part since then. BET also carries and produces several award ceremonies, ceremonies, including the network's own BET Awards, which were established in 2001 to celebrate African Americans and diverse minorities in music, acting, sports, and other parts of entertainment over the past year. Formerly the BET Honors, which were established in 2008 to honor the lives and achievements of African American figures and are presented during Black History Month each February. The BET Awards is the network's flagship event, with the BET Experience Festival held in the days leading up to the telecast. The BET Walk of Fame Awards were established in 1995 by BET. In 2004, proceeds were shared between United Negro College Fund and the BET Foundation, which executes the Healthy BET Obesity Awareness Campaign and other pro-social causes like the annual charitable Black Tie BET Walk of Fame Ceremony. In 2006, BET Interactive LLC became a subsidiary of BET. BET also has a digital group including BET.com, BET on Blast, BET on Demand, and BET Mobile. A wide range of people have protested elements of BET's programming and actions, including public enemy rapper Chuck D, journalist George Curry, writer Keith Boykin, comic book creator Christopher Priest, filmmaker Spike Lee, Syracuse University professor of finance Dr. Boyce Watkins, former NFL player Burgess Owens, and cartoonist Aaron McGrudel, who in addition to numerous critical references throughout his series of The Boondocks made two particular episodes, The Hunger Strike and The Uncle Ruckus reality show, criticizing the channel. As a result, BET heavily censors suggested content from the videos that it is, often with entire verses and scenes removed from certain rap videos. Many scholars within the African American community maintain that BET perpetrates and justifies racism by affecting the stereotypes held about African Americans and also by affecting the sight of its young viewers through its bombardment of negative images of African Americans. Following the demise of civil rights leader Coretta Scott King in 2006, BET broadcasts its regular scheduled music video programming rather than covering Coretta's live funeral service as was done by Black Family Channel and by cable news channels such as CNN, Fox News Channel, and MSNBC. 
The network's website streamed the funeral live, while its periodically broadcast tape 60-second reports from the funeral by senior news correspondent Andre Shawell. Michael Llewellyn, BET Senior Vice President for Corporate Communications, defended this, the um, decision. The New York Times reported that the Reverend Delman L. Coates and his organization, Enough is Enough, led protests every weekend outside the residence of BET executives against what they claimed were negative stereotypes of Black people perpetrated by BET music videos. Enough is Enough backed an April 2008 report titled The Rap on Rap by the Parents Television Council that criticized BET's rap programming, suggesting that the gratuitous, sexual, violent, and profane content was targeting children and teens. In a 2010 interview, BET co-founder Sheila Johnson explained that she herself is ashamed of what the network has become. I don't watch it. I suggest to my kids not to watch it, she said. When we started BET, it was going to be the Ebony Magazine on television. We had public affairs programming. We had news. I had a show called Teen Summit. We had a large variety of programming. But the problem is that then the video revolution started up. And then something happened. And I didn't like it at all. And I remember during those days, we would sit up and watch these videos and decide which ones were going on and which ones weren't. We got a lot of backlash from reporting artists. And we had to start showing them. I didn't like the way women were being portrayed in these videos. Quote, unquote, BET's co-founder, Sheila Johnson. Sean Combs boasted on recent media reports that he is kicking the tires of BET Networks, which is in the early stages of being shot by parent Paramount Global. He would join other interested parties in a stake sale of Paramount Assets, joining fellow models Tyler Perry and Byron Allen, who both have also put their bid in to purchase shares of the network. It's time for BET to be Black-owned again, so we have the power to tell our stories, control our own narrative. This is not about me, it's about we, Diddy wrote on Instagram. So there you have it. What was, what is, and what may become a what was once the most favorite cable network in the African-American household. I hope that someone that looks like me does purchase BET again. Not trying to be racist, but just keeping it a buck. I mean, white folks have always stereotyped black Americans. They think that we're all ghetto, obnoxious, and have zero class, just to say the least. No one should control a channel as such unless they can honestly relate to the content that they show. We all know that our people aren't ghetto, obnoxious, and what have you. Yes, there are a class of us that demonstrates this type of behavior. I don't understand why Robert Johnson and his wife would sell his channel to folks that didn't look like them in the first place. Okay, y'all. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's all over, ladies and gentlemen. Tyler Perry has bought BET and all of its networks. I'm super proud of this brother. He's born and raised in New Orleans, was not born in the best situation, turned himself into a self-made billionaire and bought this long-standing and historical brand. From what I understand, VH1 will be included in the deal and the BT Plus will be included in the deal. If you remember, BET Plus was a joint venture between Perry and former BET owner Paramount Studios.